The following interview was conducted with Joseph I. Elgamayo, Professor Emeritus of Industrial Engineering for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Wednesday, September the 2nd to September the 1st, 2010, in his residence in West Lafayette. The, and so also sitting in is his wife, Teresa. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Library. Welcome, Professor Elgamayo. Thank you. Thank you. And Teresa as well. Okay, tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and early years. Uh, I was born in uh, Upper Egypt from uh, uh, by two Lebanese parents. They immigrated to Egypt and I was born uh, in a small town in Upper Egypt and uh, my mother took me to Cairo to go to the uh, uh, schools because there weren't any good schools in that small town. So in Cairo, I went to a Catholic school uh, till I got to my uh, uh, senior year. But then I joined another uh, school for my final year uh, of the secondary school and then because I had uh, good grades uh, I was accepted in the uh, College of Engineering in Cairo University uh, with a scholarship and uh, I spent uh, it's a five year program in the School of Mechanical Engineering. I graduated with honor and traditionally who graduate with honor, uh, Egypt send him abroad to finish his graduate work. So I was sent to the United States. Uh, I had scholarship uh, from the federal government and in the United States I spent a few months in Washington DC being oriented for the life in the United States and then they got me an, an, an acceptance in MIT and the officer said uh, uh, you're lucky uh, MIT accepted you but they estimate that you have to spend the seven years to get your doctor degree. So uh, I was so surprised. I said, no, I don't want to go to uh, MIT. Uh, seven years? Seven years. Because they did not know much about my undergraduate uh, work. So they said, we expect you to spend seven years. That's like going through college again. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I said, I don't want to go to MIT. And really, they were surprised. Anyway, they said, where do you want to go? I said, I heard of a university uh, in the Middle East called Purdue. I'm, I'm really enlarging it because it was funny. And uh, the uh, federal officer said, I'll call Purdue. So he called uh, Professor Tichnor. At that time, he was the foreign student advisor. And he said, I have an Egyptian guy here who turned down MIT. Would you accept him? So Tichnor. must be something to uh, Yeah, Tichnor said, Yeah, yeah, sure. Send him over. Send him over. So I came to, um, to Purdue. Another funny story, we arrived in uh, the... What year was this, do you recall? This was 1960. Okay, in the summer or winter or what? February Oops. 1960. And uh, we arrived in the uh, train station. In Lafayette? In Lafayette. We came by train from Washington, D.C. And I had no idea where I'm going to go, where is the university, wh what this town is all about. And uh, for my surprise, I heard somebody 
calling me in Arabic saying uh, Joe El Gumayil, Joe El Gumayil, what are you? It was really very nice surprise. I came down and it was Dr. Ishmael Hafiz. You know, Tichinor sent him to meet me. And I, we became very good friends, Dr. Ishmael. He took me to a uh, hotel room and uh, he made it easy for me. So I joined Purdue as a graduate student, 1960. Mm -hmm. And uh, 63, middle of 63, I finished my doctor degree. So really it took me three and a half years instead of seven. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, Professor O.D. Lesko was in charge of manufacturing and somehow he liked me. So he said, uh, Joe, I want you to stay over, but it's against regulation. So you better go somewhere else and then come back in three years. And I did. I went back to Egypt. I really also, I, I liked that because I felt like not too many people in Egypt have my degree. Uh, so I went to Egypt. I had, at that time, I had my daughter and my son. My son was just born. And in Egypt, uh, I didn't have a good luck. I didn't have a good job in spite of the fact that they all know that I had a degree from the United States. So I decided I want to leave Egypt. At that time, I got a letter from Professor Emrein. He said, we want you here. So I tried, I tried very hard to get the Egyptian government to let me leave Egypt. What was your job there, Joe? Uh, what did you do? They, it's Were you teaching or? It's interesting. When oh. I went there. After you got your PhD. Yeah. They, uh, they told me, you have to look for your personal file. And that's what? what personal, personal file. Personal file. And that's where you're going to be working. I said, where am I going to go for my personal file? They said, go and try Ministry of Irrigation. <laughs> the Ministry of Irrigation? Irrigation. Water? Yes. <laughs> for my good luck, uh, at the gate I met one of my fellow graduate and I told him they told me to come here to look for my personal file he said no Joe don't come don't come there is a new ministry called ministry of electricity and the minister used to be our professor so go and meet him so I went to the Ministry of Electricity and I had a good fortune of just going in and meeting him. And he said, welcome, Joe, welcome. Sign up, you're going to work for me. I said, in what capacity? He said, we're opening a new organization called the Development of Electrical Power and you're going to be working in it. So I said, okay, and uh, I start working there, and I worked there for about four months without getting any salary because they did not find my personal file. Finally, the minister called me, and he said, Joe, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to work anymore with me because they found your file. Your file is in the Ministry of Irrigation. Irrigation, right. So you have to go there. I said, I don't want to go there. He said, I cannot uh, keep you with me. You have to go there to get your salary. 
anyway I went there for one day and they said oh yeah we need you we need you uh, I said okay I worked for a couple of days but then I was lucky I found a new uh, institute called Management Development Inst Higher Management Development Institute and it's made out of about 15 uh, PhDs from different organization in the uh, outside uh, Egypt and uh, I went there I offered I said I want to work here so the uh, man in charge said sure you work in the uh, manu uh, production area and you're going to be in charge of the uh, part time in charge of our consulting area so I start working there and they gave me my salary and everything and it's interesting again I'm really uh, making more fun of that job uh, a policeman came to my house and said you are needed in the uh, police station mm -hmm. I said why he said I don't know so I took a cab because he has no way of <laughs> taking me I took a cab and I went to the police station and they said we cannot do anything to you you have to spend the night here till tomorrow we send you to the court I said why what did I do well in the court they told me being an engineer I am drafted in whatever job they offer me but I refuse that job of being in the Ministry of Irrigation so I have to feed, get the consequence and the consequence is I have to pay a fine and I have to go back to the Ministry of Irrigation anyway I paid the fine and I did not go back it just happened that the director of the Institute was very good friend of the Prime Minister as you know I'm sure in many of these small developing countries you have to pull strings so I talked with the director of our um, Institute and he talked with his friend the Prime Minister and he said uh, yeah we'll keep you there however you're gonna lose one month of pay I said okay I lose that and it's funny I got a letter from the Minister of Irrigation saying that we are recommending that you leave the Ministry of Irrigation and you work in the Management Development Institute <laughs> as if he's the one who anyway we worked there we did some good job doing consulting for different government establishment uh, till Was it within the country within the country yes and I I helped a uh, an auto factory owned by the country I heard other factories as a consultant and I ran several management program for the uh, manager of uh, Egyptian uh, factories Egyptian companies and so on uh, but then the effective effectiveness of our Institute went down the drain because the Prime Minister changed so we don't have any backing from the government and many of my colleagues in the Institute uh, left Egypt so at that time I got a letter from uh, Professor Imrine saying we need you back so I applied for visa to exit the uh, country and they refused they said how can you go to the United States they are our enemies 
because the United States at that time uh, sided with Israel in the fight between Israel and Egypt, 1966. So again, I pulled some string and uh, they gave me a visa exit. When I got the visa, I think on Monday, I told my wife and children who are leaving tomorrow. I was afraid that they may come back. So anyway, I left all my stuff, everything I own to my brother. And I came back to the United States. Yeah. Uh, Professor Imran said, uh, yeah, welcome, we need you here. And it was three years because, you know, uh, Purdue University does not allow graduate of the university to work there unless they go for three years someplace else. So he said, yeah, work, come you and come back. So I went back and I start working, teaching and so on. At the time, the police was looking for him. They did not know where he was. They went to my family, and my fam my brother denied no, no again that he was here, and I don't know where he is. We don't talk to each other. But the thing is, yeah. come close, Mom. Teresa is, is going to make a comment about leaving. Go ahead, riding yeah, back. Because he was, they didn't want him to leave, and if he leaves without their knowing, he'll be arrested. He'll be in jail. They didn't know what was. He was. So they were looking for him. They couldn't find him, and we were like. Look like the guy was stealing something, you know. So we we ca kind of got a, got out when his brother took care of his, you know, sure. his affairs and everything. And we, we left here. We left there by like chance. We said we were spraying all the time to get. To get. There were the communists there. I mean, the, the you remember Russia was there. Well, well yeah, Egypt yeah. was siding was uh, Russia. And it was like kind of you know. In the uh, 1966 war was Israel mm -hmm. and they didn't want us to leave there and, uh, one of the official people in Egypt when I asked him why can I leave he said you're not supposed to leave I said why not and he said because you cannot go I said well I have to go and I said I'm a Palestinian remember you used to work in Palestine I used to know him before he became the big personality so he said I said, I'm one of them. I mean, one of your friends. He said, the next thing we heard that he was, I was going to go with my husband. Because other than this, he was coming alone by himself. Oh, you know, that's, that's when, the that's children. at the beginning for the scholarship. I'm oh, oh. sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's before that. Anyway, I came to Purdue. Where did, uh, what, before you go, I want to ask you, what was uh, Dr. Lasko? He, he was your, he was a pretty good friend of yours at college. Very good friend. Right. Was he your major prop? He was my major prof, and when I came back, I was his uh, right arm, uh -huh. really. Where did you live when, when you people came back? Where did you where? Uh, Professor M. Ryan found me an apartment. Uh -huh. It was really very nice. Of, and he let us borrow his wife's car. Uh -huh. I'll never forget that. Professor M. Ryan was very, very nice. Sure. Anyway... We spent uh, one year in that apartment in West Lafayette, but then we spent one year in uh, uh, Lafayette itself, 31st Street. We are renting a house there. And then uh, finally, we found uh, a house, which is the one we are living in now. Uh, 1969 we moved to West Lafayette and we joined the, the Blessed Sacrament Church and we've been living here now for 40 years. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, talk a little bit about your research, the especially the evaluation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, and it's teaching. really interesting that uh, Professor Lasco told me, do whatever you want to do, whatever you like to do. That's his modus operandi, by the way. Okay. I said, I want to check something about ceramic tools. He said, okay, 
I'll get you some ceramic tools. And what do you want to do? I said, in my mind, I would like to find a prediction equation to predict when the tool is going to wear. And he said, okay, you go ahead. He gave me all the help, gave me the tool. At that time, there were about 11 technician in the shop. Is this in Michael Golden? Yes, which now there's nobody, by the way, <laughs> except the shop manager. And uh, he gave me a couple of technician to work with me, help me. And uh, I worked for one whole year running equipment. And then I finalized, I was helped very much by statistical professor. I forgot his name. He was very weak. Statistical professor. He's the one who helped me develop the prediction equation for ceramic tool. And uh, I uh, went through my uh, oral exam and uh, I passed the exam. I was sure that I'm going to pass it <laughs> because I knew that Lesk was not going to read it. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. It was very good to me, really. But that's what happened. I passed it, and uh, that's what gave me my doctoral degree. Uh, and uh, when I came back, I worked with him uh, till uh, the time he was supposed to retire. At that time, uh, retirement age was 65. So everybody has to retire at 65. And he did not like that. He didn't want to retire. He was in charge of the lab, in charge of the all the manufacturing courses. And matter of fact, at that time, Professor Barash joined, and he didn't like Professor Barash because Professor Barash was an excellent man. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, so he knew he has to retire. And at that time, they didn't have anybody to be director of the manufacturing labs. So the, the head, IE head, again, I forgot his name. Book went to me good. Huh? Hmm. Forgot his name. Was it Lime Cooler? No, no, oh. no, no. Oh, the IE lab. I, well, that's all right. No, the IE head. Uh, After Dr. Amrine? Yes. Oh. Jim knows him definitely. I forgot his name. Anyway, he said, I'll make you the director of the lab beside teaching and so on. And Professor Lasco did not like that. <laughs> he said, no, we better hire somebody else. And uh, the head said no, and he made me the director of the lab. And then Lasco kept coming really almost every day because he doesn't want to leave something he built himself, which I you know I, I sympathize with him. He built the, the lab, he built Michael Golden lab, and uh, he was very mad that he has to retire and leave it. So anyway, uh, poor man again, his uh, death, I don't know if you know about his death. He was, uh, sleeping by himself and uh, was he married oh yes oh. his wife was in the hospital no his wife died died before, he did. died before he did but he was sleeping by himself uh and he his dog came the dog came and jumped over him so start playing with his dog uh, the dog pulled the, the blanket and that wrapped around his neck and broke his neck. I don't know if you know this story. Uh, he yeah, didn't he live. He, he didn't live long after that. He was on a wheelchair. Uh, Did somebody find him? Uh, oh, yeah, he was in the hospital at the oh. time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he was in the. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think uh, the cleaning lady found him or something. 
and he was writing a book and he did not finish it so his daughter called me up he had two daughter the oldest one called me up and said Joe would you please finish his book and the publisher called me I said sure I'll try as much as I can anyway we finished the book and they gave me some recognition for finishing the book uh, and that really was a little bit strange that uh, he died this way yeah right um, talk about that uh, the next thing talk about that training program we did for the metric uh, oh yeah yeah well because I was raised on the metric system uh -huh. in Egypt when I spent five years in college and uh, I got uh, at that time there was a big drive toward changing the American system to the metric system and because I knew about it I knew all the different aspects of it uh, they uh, got me uh, to talk about it and make presentation to different outfits I remember one of them was the uh, high school teachers of uh, mathematics and uh, don't know what else and I gave a presentation of about five hours about the metric system and I, I put together a booklet really it is a huge booklet about the metric system and uh, it didn't go and the United States uh, the Congress refused to apply the metric system because it was really going to be a big problem for the worker and the people who deal with the inch and so on how they can go and work with the metric system so it really died but at that time yes was that a sorry was it at a time when the teachers from high schools and they were asking you to come and yes give that's what i said mm -hmm. I said I made a five hour presentation yeah. because mm -hmm. they were really eager to know something about it. Everybody was expecting that it's going to be implemented, mm -hmm. but it didn't because the uh, labor union objected to that and the Congress listened and said no. It was implemented in the medical profession implemented also in the electronic profession up to now you see everything in medical and electronic is in uh, metric system but it didn't go beyond that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. you mentioned um, before we got started your involvement in TAP yes, uh, yes. what exactly were you doing with them at that, that for time, the researchers technical assistance yes, program yes. Purdue. at that time professor Lang Kula was in charge of IE and uh, he called me in his office one time and said Joe I want you to join TAP they are looking for somebody in manufacturing so I said okay uh, I think they offered me I'm not sure 30% or 40% of my time so I went to TAP and they told me you have to have some graduate student working with you so I chose two graduate students in manufacturing one of them is currently a professor in Georgia Tech the other one work in a company in uh, somewhere in Washington I think anyway and we really had a good time we what was a good chance for me almost every week to visit one town in Indiana and talk with the people there about their problem and uh, we were trying to solve their problem 
and uh, my graduate students were really very good. They come up with all kind of solution, and we presented to the uh, uh, Indiana companies. I remember uh, we did several projects for uh, Wabash Center. You know Wabash Center? Uh, they were really interested in designing layout for the business they do. And we did that for them about three, four times. Every time they get an order from a company for their employee or their people to do something, we design the setup and the layout for what they do. Another thing I did, and I, if I, rem I remember that, we did some work for a company which makes uh, boxes. What's boxes for dead people? What do you call oh, the coffins? Oh, coffins. Coffin. Okay, coffin. Batesville coffin, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was really interesting. Uh, I don't remember which uh, small town, and uh, we helped them out. I did some small work also for the big coffin company in. Uh, it's a little more. They mentioned the name of all these big. Uh, I don't know. The big one is Batesville. 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 Yeah, Batesville. Right. Batesville. Right. 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 I would there several times. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Batesville. Because uh, you know better. Yeah, in southern Indiana. Yeah. Yeah. Helen Brand. Right. I'm Hillenbrand. sure you know Helen Brand. Yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I did some work for a lady. Uh, Ray was very interesting. She makes Christmas tree out of beads small beads. beads and they used to thread the, the beads which really is not that much manufacturing as it is a novelty and we designed for them a small machine which threaded the beads in about five percent of the time than the time they used to do it and she promised me that she's going to make one Christmas tree for me and give it to me. And I gave her some of that trinket from Purdue. Uh, small hammer, small uh, uh, hook and bucket and so on. Right. Anyway, up to now I didn't get anything. <laughs> but that was really very interesting because we designed a rotating machine which will thread the uh, the beads much faster and this way instead of they were spending about two days two complete days making the Christmas tree they can make it in about half hour nice. yeah. <laughs> and this is one of the projects um, yeah that's good uh, tell us a little bit about um, the campus when you first came in the 60s and early 70s what was the campus like not as big as it is now, of course. Yeah, yeah, it was not and as... And you were in Grissom Hall, though, where, that was where IE was, is that correct? No, oh. no, I was, no, I was oh. never in Grissom Hall. Okay, but IE I was, was in, though. Yeah, okay. but I was in Michael Golden. Adjacent Michael to it. Golden Lab was in the manufacturing. Okay. And when I, uh, when I came to campus, uh, there weren't too many people working with Lasco in the office. Uh-huh. So I took the next office to him, and he had, he had two secretaries, he had 11 uh, technicians and so on, and uh, the next office to him was so huge. Till a uh, long time after that, they rebuilt Michael Golden. They rebuilt the offices, and also we had a, a big job when the Dean of Engineering said you have to get rid of half the machines there. We had about 120 machines. And that's what Odi Lesko bought to establish the lab. So our problem, matter of fact, my problem was say which machines can stay which machines can go 
and we made that decision so half half the Michael Golden lab became the old machines the old lab and the new half they built the offices in it Professor Barash was there uh, different professors were there And oh. Purdue made very good money out of selling the uh, old machines. Okay. Um, what about the, the uh, 50th anniversary? You and your wife were at that event. It's kind of nice to be around for the school when it celebrated its 50th. Yeah. A lot of people came back. Yeah, I and don't, I really don't care. Yeah. And I then remember. the book finally came out too. Yes. 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 And they had a book signing down in Miami a couple no. years ago at IME. The book came from Lime Cooler. Uh huh. And I really, I got a copy of it. Sure. It's a very nice book. Right. Written. I didn't know. I didn't know that Lime Cooler is a writer, really, till I saw the book. <laughs> uh, what about consulting no. activities? What's did you ever you did some consulting? I did some consulting on okay. my own. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, I was competing with Gabriel Salvindi on doing consulting for companies. I have a new, a good anecdote to tell you. When I retired, uh, Jim Barney arranged for a retirement party for me. And the party was in uh, at Purdue. And when the, uh, before the party which was during lunch uh, Colin Moody Professor Colin Moody who retired about two months before me and was living in uh, California Colin Moody called me up on the phone and said Joe when you go to your retirement party ask Jim Barney how come he's still working his Two of his students retired, Colin Moody <laughs> and I, because I was his student and Colin Moody was his student. So when I stood up to uh, give my speech or whatever it is, I said, uh, Jim, uh, Colin Moody called me about half hour ago and said, uh, ask Jim Barney how come he did not retire while two of his students already retired. So his answer was, I don't know, you guys are older than I. And we are, we are <laughs> Really, it was nice, uh, everybody <laughs> laughed at it. <laughs> oh, um, awards and honors, you got the best teaching award, and that's I, nice. 1988, okay. I think, best teacher award undergraduate, right. yes. Right. Any other? Uh, uh, no, I don't think I got okay. anything beyond uh, that. Then the, your associations, IIE, and your Institute of Industrial Engineers, yes. member. And I was a member. Yeah. I, I right. was a member also of the Institute of Manufacturing Engineers. Okay, okay. Uh, and at one time we were also the American National Metric Council. Yes, right. yes. Okay. What about your hobbies and special interests? What you got? Uh, anything special? No, really, I didn't have anything special okay. except taking care of my family. Okay, well, that's good. Okay. Just started building a few things, you know. What? A few things, you know, like things that you did there. there. What? Oh, am I supposed to say No, that? no, no. What? You that's remember I had any special, special hobby? Yeah, he used to build things uh, from Purdue, you know, and he was happy of doing it, you know, like, hey, I, I never built anything, but I'm doing this. Like, Oh, some of the memento little yeah. things that you did. Yeah. Okay. What about, talk about family. Uh, where'd you meet your wife? <coughs> mm. That's another long story. No, no, come on, just huh? cut it short. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we were in church. And she, did you meet her in, in Egypt? In Egypt. In Egypt oh, okay. Yes. Right. We were in church in Egypt, and uh, the church was the Maronite church. Okay. And Maronite are Catholic. Mm hmm. Yes. Uh, so, in, in church, I was the president of the boys' congregation, and she I was... I don't like the Holy Name Society in churches, which was for men only. 
Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, main, mainly we were right. young men, really. Okay. And she was the president oh, the of the girls' congregation. Okay. And the priest was in charge of the two. Never forget Father Akiki. What that? He didn't do too much. Okay. But anyway, he somehow... You want to get the, the uh, presidents together, huh? Yes, somehow he <laughs> had that feeling. That social event. Really. And that started it. And I got to see her in church and so on. And uh, about what, two, three years, we got married... But at that time, my mother did not want my being married to Teresa. <laughs> so we had the wedding in church, but she left the country your and mother. she went on a vacation in Lebanon. Uh, your mother? My mother. Yeah. Okay. Mothers always do that. Mm. She That's really did not, like, did not like any of her boys. We were three men, three boys. Oh, and three and your brothers? Yes. Okay. Uh, I was the youngest. And uh, my oldest brother, Michael, uh, married his cousin some time ago. And then when my time came to marry, she really wasn't that enthusiastic about it. And the first one was. As a matter of fact, even brother. my middle brother. She didn't like him to marry. She didn't want to leave home, right? Yeah. 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 She didn't want him to leave them. She right. thought she can live with them. Anyway, she... Uh, yeah. What about a um, Purdue tradition? Is there a Purdue tr tradition that uh, you recall? Favorite anyone like Boilermaker Special or football or athletics? No, football, we... No, I... Uh, you used to go we, to the we, games. We used to go to the game every oh, yeah. year. Every oh, yeah. year. Basketball. Or till... Uh, uh, the last couple of years, uh, we were able to go to the parking lot for handicapped. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's when I, I was handicapped a little bit and she was handicapped and so on. I had an open heart surgery 20 years ago. I had angioplasty about three years ago. And that really, and I had, I was diabetic. It's interesting how I became diabetic. I went to the hospital for a kidney stone. That was about uh, 40 years ago. And my doctor, who by the way still living, but he retired. My doctor uh, in the hospital said, Joe, your, uh, your stone already disintegrated but uh, do you remember if your father was diabetic I said yes I remember that he said do you remember if your mother was diabetic I said yes I remember that he said you are that's yeah. when I found out that I am diabetic and, and really in the whole family my, my sister also was diabetic and poor girl they have to chop her legs and my cousin was diabetic and they chopped her legs so really uh, it ran in the family yeah, yeah. how about an outstanding event uh, not really much I, uh, I had a decent life uh, go to church and take care of the family and so on mm -hmm. I don't think really what about retirement activities what you've been involved in anything special uh, do you any volunteering at all no, yeah. since I retired, did I do anything? Then? Volunteering church? At church? Besides, oh, the church, oh, yes. Oh, sure, okay. Yeah, I, I was an usher, and I was in the Night of Columbus. I, I, I was all that. But mm -hmm. then, when I reached my age, I said, that's it for me. I'm not doing much of that. Okay. But really, I, I, I volunteer in the church sure. uh, many things. And you're Wife was always active in the church too. Oh, she is in the choir. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, she left the choir for about two years, but then they called her back two weeks ago. Uh -huh. So she's going to go back again and yeah, sing. Because I was, uh, they needed me 
and but because of my health with this I, I couldn't stand up sure stuff and stuff. so they tried to help me but then I decided not to and they gave me the time off oh, that's okay anything any questions that I forgot to ask or anything that you would like to do in closing you think of anything or Teresa anything uh, no no, okay. The school has really grown in the time since you come. Oh yes, oh yes, new building, new building, new building, all the time. Yeah. And, and uh, Purdue became so beautiful just to look at. Really, it's so really grown a lot. We we're so proud of being, you know, connected yeah. with Purdue. Right. Okay. I was, I was, I I like it. The professor Titchener, I like it. Professor Ishmael, we became good friends. Really, uh, I hated that time. Everybody lost to him. Uh, I like Professor Lasko, in spite of the fact that really uh, he didn't do much to me. Yeah. I remember when he retired, I arranged for a big party for his retirement. I don't know when, where was it? There were about 200 people also in his, I did all that and I, I joked about him when I made my speech Isn't that, for Drew, did that I uh, yeah. I thought uh, I thought I am his right hand uh, and I stayed all the time as, re as his right hand but I found out that he's left handed <laughs> <laughs> that was oh, a joke dear. I had to Joe and Teresa I want to thank you very much for this opportunity thank I you. really really appreciate it thank you